Oh, they took my little thing. Oh, here it is. Good morning and welcome to Edge Talk, better known as the Sunday morning service here at the Edge Community Church. We're glad that you're with us this morning. We missed you immensely on last week, and we thank God for you that are joining us in service as well as online this morning. Would you do me a favor? Would you hit share and share this word with some of the people that uh, you know need this word this morning? Again, we're glad that you're with us. Good morning, Nora. We're glad you're here. Hopefully the cookie business is going really well. This girl makes some of the best cookies in the world, and she does these unique shapes. Uh, she is the black Mrs. Fields. <laughs> Good morning, Lonnie. Thank you for being with us. Keith Brown, we're glad you're here this morning. To our guest in church this morning, we thank God for you. Shall we pray? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your love everlasting. We thank you for this day, one that we've never seen before, never shall again. But God, in it, we give you glory and we, God, look for the very purpose of our existence in this day. God, we promise you that we're going to be better and not bitter, that we're going to grow and not become stagnant because of the hurt, the pain, or the disappointment of this week. We start afresh on this day, God, and we thank you for it. God, as I sit and you stand, as I am silenced, but you speak through me, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart not only be acceptable, but let it be exceptional so that that may be a rhema word for these, your people. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the people of God said amen. Amen. This morning we go back into our series, Making Waves, Not Ripples. For some of us, the ripple is delicate and safe. Amen. Oh, but when it comes to the, the wave, there's the uncertainty of it and how big it will be. And will it take us or will we ride it? But it's necessary to make impact. I was having a conversation this morning with a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, and he said that sometimes he'd rather just blend in. I said, oh, but that's not possible. God made you the vessel that you are. You're one of the most handsome men I know. You, whatever you put on, you look like a fashion model. How do you think that God intended for you to fit in? You're made to stand out. You're a testimony to just how good God is. And uh, he said, you know, I never thought of it like that. Dr. Seuss says it best. Why fit in when you were made to stand out? How many of us this morning understand that making the way causes us to stand out? This morning, we want to talk a little bit more about the step when we got to it. It said that we had to know you, to know you. I'm going to make the wave. I've got to understand what my real purpose is. And that's where we are this morning. The Bible says in the latter part of the verse, it says that we have been called what? According to his purpose. See, the problem with that is that we've, ex we've uh, extracted the word his and said called according to purpose. And so therefore we want, to take we want to take possession of the purpose. But how many of you understand that what is his is his. It's what you say at home. What mine is, what's mine is mine. And what's yours is yours. And what's ours is ours. And some people say what mine, what's mine is yours. And what's yours is, you know, you know the thing. So we, we're here. Cousin, I'm so glad to see you this morning. I love you, Pamela Rollins Gibson. I really do. So understand this morning that if we're going to make the wave, here's step one. We've got to back off and tune inward. We gotta back off. Sometimes we're so busy trying to make the wave that we make the wave for wave's sake and not for his purpose. Again, that what we're doing is what we want to do, but not what we're called to do. Don't you hate to see folks or hear folks sing in the choir that have no business being in the <laughs> choir? They really are some uh, Z minor folks when everybody else is singing G major. So in turn, we have to know sometimes when we've got to back off from the thing. In the series, when we talked about saying no for a better yes, I was sharing with our visitor this morning who um, we're excited to have in service this morning from D.C. Darren Phelps, they're in good hands. Know that. Know that they are. Um, but understand this, that sometimes the no moves everything out of the way for his yea and amen. But sometimes we, it isn't that we are unfaithful, but our faith is challenged at the moment because the light bills due, the car notes due, the mortgage payment is due, the rent at, at the shop is due, and, and people haven't come in, and someone comes in and says, well, I have this opportunity for you, and you say yes to it, 
And it seems like it's going to be okay. But then there's some things that happened in the way that makes you know that you should have just stood back and said no. And that's a hard thing to do. Especially when God sits you in the, I'm driving home and God says, you know, you should have said no. Because what, what, what has happened is not their problem. It's your issue. Ha, ah, come on somebody. Uh, and so it's, it's imperative that sometimes we're willing to back out of the thing and just say, some of the relationships where oh, I went out of focus. Ah, but see, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes we got to rack the focus to get it back because we've lost focus of what we're supposed to be doing because now it, comes, it becomes about them and all their stuff. And their stuff often begins to weigh down on us. Can't make your issues mine. Because then all of a sudden we're buying subscriptions. How many of you understand today that it's time to cancel the subscription? If it's not some, you ever had a magazine come to your house and you never read it? But it's just there and it's gathering dust. Or we take them out the plastic and we, we beautifully, you know how you used to go to your auntie's house and they, it was on the coffee table. It didn't mean, but she hadn't read it because you could tell that the page of that ebony had not been turned. That, that jet had only been turned to one page, and that was because Uncle Bubba was looking at the jet beauty. Okay. And she canceled that subscription because she got mad at him about that. But look at the fact today that sometimes we've got to tune in. We've got to be still and know that he is God. And that so am I. And that possessively I am his. That's why it's his purpose. Amen. Did anybody else just get a chill on that? That it's his purpose. Maybe it's just a fan. But it's his purpose. That I've been called to this planet. And there are times when the things that I know I'm called to do, it seems like there's a block. Truthfully, I applied for several talk show host positions because that's what I did for a living for a long time. Love it. People have told me that I'm good at it. I know I am. I know it's a part of my calling in life. My sister and I had a conversation this week and she said, she said, but don't, why, don't resign yourself to doing it their way. Do it your way. There are too many opportunities that have come, uh, come in to play technologically. That's, sorry about that, guys. Glad, thank, you, thank you for staying with us. Come on back in. So what happens in the process, she said to me, she said, don't be limited in this season. You want to do it? Then do it. Don't let their no's become your no. Because if his answers are yes and amen and you've been called according to his purpose. So sometimes we have to back off. And tune inward. What do you mean by that? Look at this. Uh, the, Jack and, the Japanese poet Hakum wrote this. Not knowing how near the truth is, we seek it far away. One of my favorite cartoons or illustrations is the one of the guy with the pick. Who has got his pickaxe on his shoulder and he's leaving and he's this close to hitting the mother load in diamonds. While there's this other guy above him that's still just picking away. How many times have we been this close and we gave up? Because in the moment, because, it did, because what our natural eyes saw huh, were wide, but our spiritual eyes had become blinded to the frustration that it didn't happen in our time. Sometimes we quit that job because they made us mad. But had we waited a little bit longer, the people that made us mad would have been fired and it would have been our promotion. Sometimes we just got to be still and know whose we are again. Because sometimes it's so easy for the enemy or the inner me to start playing mind games with you about how, who you are and, and what you don't do and I know you and I know what you did. It's like, I know what you did last summer. But they said, I know what you did last night. Yep. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It was like going to this concert last night. I drove around for 45 minutes to get a parking space. Finally decided, okay, I'm going to pay these $10. Then maybe I should have paid an hour ago. <laughs> And when I got there, the concert was over. I was like, so then I just walked to the next event that I was supposed to be, and it wasn't around the corner. Trust me, I got my exercise in. And I went to that event, and, and it was great because I met some really great people. But my whole thing is sometimes we're driving around in circles looking for an answer, and it's been there all the time, but we didn't like what it would take. So what I said in the, in the uh, message pri or in the, the drive-by, the pastoral drive-by as we got here for service this morning, 
that sometimes we don't want to go through the thing. But we can't come out of it unless we go through it. Psalms reminds us that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, because I ride my staff. They comfort me. But you know what the Lord said to me a couple of weeks ago, and I think I shared it with the congregation that was here that Sunday, that sometimes there's still going to be valleys and mountains. We all will talk about the mountaintop experience, but how about getting there and realizing, dang, there's another mountain that I've got to go through. But the mountain that he, he took you through in the valley of the shadow, he'll take you even when it's the mountaintop experience. But some of us just want to be jetted in or zip lined into the mountaintop and there's our chalet. It's not always going to happen that way. It can happen that way. And sometimes because we're so busy, plot, we're plotting and not planning. Come on, somebody. How many times have we plotted at something instead of planning it, trying to figure out how, how can we cut you plot when you start looking for shortcuts and looking for the easy answer and, and just saying, well, this is better than that. When I make the plan, it's really me then making the plan and submitting the plans because you can't look. They will shut you down if you try to make plans to build something. And they aren't approved. Because when, because you, and you know what? Be careful that you got some people working on your plan that are watching you. Because the first time you make them mad, they're going to call the people on you. And then when you come out, you're going to have to explain exactly like, shut it down. And what you thought you were going to be able to do, now you have to do with new expenses. Amen? Does that make sense? So we got to back off and tune in. We got to hear what God is saying this morning. We've got to hear that still voice within ourselves that says to you, this is not the time. How many of us have heard it and did it anyway? It's like, God, God, I know you still going to be, you got me. Why would he have you when you left him? You abandoned his plan. You said to him, God, I know better than you. When we move without consulting him first, I know better than you. Let me tell you something. When, when we moved out here, um, truth be told, I, I didn't have a dime. I had an investor that said, yeah, I'm with you, da, 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 da. The day we opened, he ghosted. And I looked up as the door was still closed. I looked up and I said, how are we supposed to do this? And God began to give ideas. I got on the phone. I called some of my friends that owned Haberdasheries. said, look, can I borrow and out and, and I will pay you whatever. So I opened my store with four mannequins and two tables. I looked like a swap meet. And that was not the vision. And I was like, God, but what? He said, I gave it to you. Now, I'll give you increase that comes with it. Because you're faithful. Because it had been so easy to go to the people and say, look, y'all going to keep my deposits. Because they weren't going to give them back. We knew that. And I'll come back in another season. And I went to, I had my hand on the door and God says, just ask them what the, what the uh, open date is. I was like, but they know. And then we had a storm. This was two years ago. So we had this hurricane that was coming. Didn't come, but the campus was shut down. And so I couldn't get my delivery. So everything went back to the factory and it wasn't going to get back in time. For me to open. So I opened. But God gave me that whole idea and concept. Just borrow. There are people who believe in you. I called one of my friends and mentors in this business. And I said, look, this is what happened. Can you help me out? He gave me some ties. I went and bought some socks from a manufacturer that could deliver the next day. And, I, and we opened anyway. And, when, and then told people, come back in November. And I ended up looking different. One of my friends who's a jewelry designer sent me jewelry. So we would, and so we showcased his jewelry for the grand opening. When they came back two months later, they didn't recognize the place because we were faithful. But you had, I had to go inward for a minute and tune out what was being said that couldn't happen and wouldn't happen. How many of us forget to tune out? I was listening to um, Iyanla this morning. She, had, does this, she has this new app called um, Abundant Blessings or something like that. And I was listening to it and it said that we had to have balance. 
When you don't have balance, this is what we're talking about. When there's no balance in your life, you can't tune, you can't back off. Because you become, you become like the hamster on the wheel. Ain't going nowhere. But you know you see, that's the only way it's going to move. But how many of us have been mad at God when we really should have been mad at ourselves? Because we didn't. We did not back off from the thing and let him tell us, here's the plan. He says, I know the plan I have for you. Well, if he knows the plan, then why not listen to him? It's so easy. Let me tell you something. I do this television show. Uh, once a month. In fact, those of you that are in the area tomorrow, hopefully you watch Channel 10 at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. If you miss it, it'll be on my, um, on my page by 2 o'clock. But I do the show and sometimes when they come up with the idea, I'm like, okay. And then I have to take a deep breath when I put the phone down. I'm like, how am I going to make this happen? Because what they wanted me to do, I don't have the necessary resources. At the moment, God says, yes, you do look around. Look around. And then I'll go do some, thank God for the internet. I'll Google some things and I'm like, you know what? That will work. <laughs> that will work. But I'm glad that even in my creative spirit, I can still hear his spirit. Because, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in being the anything that we forget that he is before we ever were. And if he called me according to purpose and he's a giver of every good and perfect give all this stuff that everybody... Me for it's his. So that means that he has he has an opinion in how I utilize it. Amen? Amen. So sometimes we need to go inward. And when we when we when we go inward, we then have to realize that we have to learn, here's number two, learn from our choices and their consequences. Learn from our choices. You knew when you met him or her, they weren't right for you. But you did it anyway. And then they became cray-cray. Crazy showed up for dinner one day and decided to stay for a couple of months. And, we, and, and we're like, how did I get here? Because you didn't listen to the voice within. Say no for a better yes. When I began to look at this, I thought, okay, Lord, you ain't got to do me like this this week. Because we had a conversation off camera about what had happened. And I'm like, now you're throwing it back up in my face again. He said, because I want you to hear me because I don't want you slowed down in your process by this. How many of us realize that and would admit we should be further along than we are? But because we made some choices. In the process. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when I do the first two, it takes me to step three. I can get on path. Because some of us have been off track. You know, they have these vehicles that are called all-terrain. Your Hyundai is not all-terrain. <laughs> and we still want to go off-road with something that's not made to go off-road. How many of us understand that, because the Bible says, thank you, Holy Ghost, that to every man there's given a measure of faith. Every man there's a measure. Some of us can go off terrain and we are not affected. There are others of us that will try it and we ain't ready for it. Amen? Amen. I often ask God, well, I came from a mega church. God, what? Two or three gathered in the name, you'll be in the midst. And I have to say it and, and make myself believe it because sometimes I'm like, geez, really? On the Sundays that it's the folks on the other side of the camera because there's no one else in the room. And I'm like, God, really? And there's some people, well, you know, pa Pastor Rick, God wouldn't be mad at you if you quit. Who says who? Who says who? Why? He did. How do you think Jesus felt? And by no means am I comparing myself to Jesus, but since he's my elder brother, that means that we got some of the same spiritual DNA. How would you feel that you came out of 12 that you done groomed to be your successors and the ones that you took with you, the boys that you thought really understood the purpose, the vision, the mission, and they come back, you come back in your weakest hour and they sleep, they snore and they count, they count on sheep 
instead of capturing them to bring for you to lead? How would you feel? But in that moment, he had to realize whose he was. So he went back and said, okay, I'm going to go pray. But it wasn't before he read them. I love the fact that Jesus owns a library, amen, a library card, and he reads well. You couldn't sit with me for an hour? Come on, really? But how many of us can't even spend 15 minutes with him before our mind goes here, there, everywhere? And I tell the people, don't feel bad if you can only do 15 minutes. Make them the best 15 minutes that you will spend in your day. He knows you. He made you. But my mom said he could have winked, snapped, or blew and changed you. But he knew that your mind, that you got ADD. And some of us have spiritual ADD because we start thinking about every, we'll start praying for somebody, Lord, but that ache in my back. What is it, God? I don't understand what I'm going through. Amen? But sometimes I've got to look that, hmm. There's somebody this morning that's off path and doesn't even realize that they're off path. They think that it's going well and they, and they wonder why they keep getting flats every 15 miles or so. It's because your car, your vehicle, your spirit wasn't made to go off path. That's like me trying to drive my car in the ocean. It's not a boat. Amen? How many of us have been sitting in the ripples and playing and think we're doing something when there were waves to be made. He said, you've been off path long enough with your ripples. You played in the kiddie pond long enough. You don't learn how to swim in the kiddie pond. You learn that you like water in the kiddie pond. You learn to swim when you go to the deep. Amen? But some of us have tried to be deep and didn't go deep. As I like to do on, that, on those moments like that. Right. We have tried to be deep. But have never ventured off into the deep. I can't talk to you about a faith walk if I've never walked in faith. 17 years in this ministry. Where there have been people and no people. There have been a lot of people and there have been a few people. Because I know that I was called according to purpose, I know that this is what I'm supposed to do, one of the things that I'm supposed to do. There's a big wheel. I always see my life as this big wheel, and this is one of the spokes. In fact, it occupies several of them. But at the same time, even in the moments where we've gone off path, or as they like to say, technology, that we've had to go offline. You know what I love about certain things? There are certain things that, like even the Bible app, is still accessible offline. <laughs> Email is often still accessible offline. He's accessible when we've gone offline because we can always bootleg back into the connection if we have to. But here's the thing. Some of us have tried to be, we've never really been willing to make a real connection. We bootleg the whole time. It was mama's prayers. It was mama's testimony. It was mama's tongue. It was daddy's dance. Whatever the case, it was their God and not ours. We talk about the fact that the underlining theme behind the edge is moving from religion to relationship. Because see, a lot of folks will go off path with religion. But you can't go off path if you have a relationship because you're willing to take a step back and go inward and not worry about the ground that you've lost. Well, early we talked about the fact that some of us know that we've been still God. God is still saying to us, I got you. You're going to make those waves. But in order for you to make the wave, you've got to understand the purpose of the wave. It has never been to fit in. Waves don't fit in. The ripples fit in because there's a bunch of them. There will always be ripples until the wave comes. <laughs> Amen? Hopefully this message has blessed you this morning. We didn't get to all of our points, but hopefully you'll join us next Sunday as we continue. We're grateful that you were with us this morning. We thank you to our guests who were in, in service with us and to those of you that joined us. If you want to find out more about the Edge Church, here's what you do. You go to theedgechurchtampabay.org and you'll find out all the information about our vision, our mission, what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. If you'd like to give, you can go to the website and hit the donate button via PayPal, and you can bless this ministry. 
How you bless us, though, really, beyond that, is taking the opportunity to be back here next week, share the message, or join us in service. Until next time, remember, we are moving from religion to relationship as we live the everyday God experience. Where? On the edge. Take care.